Hi there, uh, welcome to uh, Tuesday's Thoughts. And we're turning back to John Piper's book, uh, Coronavirus and Christ. And uh, in the second part of the book, he suggests some answers to why the coronavirus might be here. His first answer is to give the world, uh, in the coronavirus outbreak, uh, uh, as in all other calamities, a physical picture of the moral horror and spiritual ugliness uh, that is caused by sin. His second answer is that some people will be infected with the coronavirus as a specific judgment from God because of their sinful attitudes and actions. And his third answer, the coronavirus is a God-given wake-up call to be ready for the second coming of Christ. Well, that's what we're going to explore today, but I think uh, really uh, it's to get our attention is the main, the main reason or the main way that God uses calamities like this. And certainly the return of Jesus is something that he wants us to be ready for and to think about. Well, uh, from that very first day when uh, Jesus ascended to heaven, you remember in Acts 1 verse 11, uh, Men of Galilee, the angel said, Why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who, who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. And at his coming, his return, Jesus will come to judge the world. In Matthew 25, verse 31, 32, it says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And for those who are not ready to meet Christ... That day will come suddenly, and it will come like a trap. Uh, in Luke 21, verse 34, it says, Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and anxieties of life. And that day will, will close on you unexpectedly like a trap. Uh, uh, elsewhere, uh, Jesus described uh, this day uh, as... Um, well, I guess uh, the wars, the famines, the earthquakes, he called these the birth signs. And we can include in that the, the, the COVID virus as well. And this is the image of the earth as a woman in labour trying to give birth to the new world which Jesus would bring in his coming. And Paul picked up this imagery in Romans chapter 8, referring to birth pains and all the groanings of this age, all the miseries of disaster and disease, and again, uh, COVID's included in that. And he pictured us in our diseases as part of the labour pains of the world. We groan as we wait for the redemption of our bodies at the coming of Jesus. Then we will raise from the dead and he will give us new and glorious bodies. Well, uh, Romans 8, 21 to uh, 23 says that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. And we know that the whole of creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And not only so, but we ourselves who have, uh, who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. And so the point is, I think, that Jesus wants us to be alert, to be wakeful. Uh, Jesus wants us to see birth pains, uh, including the coronavirus and uh, the, the whole uh, aspect of global warming, as reminders and alerts that he is coming and we need to be ready for his coming. Uh, you must be ready uh, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect, uh, Jesus said in Matthew 24. You don't have to be a date setter in order to seriously wait for Jesus. And what he says is unmistakable. He says uh, in Mark 13, Be on your guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. Stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. The message is clear. Stay awake. Uh, be alert. Be ready. And the birth pains of the, the natural world are, are meant to give us this message, to, to bring a, a sense of wakefulness. 
But how many people are not awake at the moment? For all their frenzied activity, uh, they're sound asleep in regard to the coming of Jesus. Uh, the uh, coronavirus is a merciful wake-up call to be ready. And the way to be ready uh, for the coming of Jesus is firstly to receive the forgiveness for our sins and then to walk in the light of the gospel and then to live in readiness every day. Uh, I, I, I ready myself for a thief by locking the door each night or when I leave the house. Of course, I, I can remember numerous times when I failed to lock the door and leave, even left the door opened all night. And we won't achieve a constant readiness. But let's be sure that in these dark days, uh, we remind ourselves to be alert for Jesus' return. Uh, to, to be ready. To live our lives in such a way that if Jesus came tomorrow, we would be prepared and we would not be surprised. And I think that will be one of the, the great lessons to take away from the coronavirus. God is calling for our attention. Well, just one other thing I want to say, and that is uh, we remain in lockdown at least until next Saturday. And I want to encourage you uh, to take up your church directory and just ring one or two people. Um, ask God to uh, lead you to who he might want you to call. Just ring up, say good day, say I hope you're doing well, and... Uh, have a, a chat uh, for five or ten minutes. And uh, if we all did that, uh, I think we, we would go a long way to uh, really overcoming the sense of, of isolation and loneliness. So it would be great if you could do that. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray that you would help us uh, to live in readiness for Jesus' return. Help us, Father, not to live in dread, but to live in a happy expectation of Jesus coming and bringing righteousness and justice into our experience. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me. Hope you can do so again tomorrow. Bye for now.